guys and welcome back to the Saints View, the channel for something content for our match preview ahead of Southampton's home game against Watford. We're back at St Mary's and it is easily the biggest game of the season so far. Have to win this one and also win on Wednesday night, but of course that is not what we're going to be talking about today. It's a 5.30 kickoff under lights on Sky Sports. Hopefully this time a game under the lights on Sky will go to plan. And of course we are winless at home so we have to start picking up points on our own turf starting with Watford on Saturday. We played so well against Arsenal last time out so we have to build on that performance and just get the three points. I don't care how we do it and we'll get onto that later on in the video. We're also going to get insight from Watford fans Shane from WDA team so stay tuned for that. But before we get into the video do make sure you are subscribed if you haven't yet already. Follow us on all of our socials as well and let's get into the video. As always we have to talk about the last game which was that very good display against Arsenal at the end where it's a 2-2 draw in the end but really we should have won it by th three or four goals. We created some really clear cut chances and produced over 20 shots but only six of them on target which was sort of highlighted this week and sort of emphasises how poor we've been going forwards as well as defensively as well this season and that's not the first time we've had that problem but because we lost our lead in the last minute of the game against Arsenal we have not won for two months and we haven't actually won at home yet it has to change and we saw these two games as massive after what was a very difficult start to the season it has to be said but Watford and Norwich have to be winning both games of but easily the biggest game of the season so far. We screwed up against Everton. We're already playing catch up to an extent in terms of the points we need to pick up over this sort of easier run of fixtures, should we say. <laughs> and there's just no room for error. It honestly feels like this week could define our season. You know, if we get less than six points against Watford and Norwich, I, I do fear for us and I feel we may be having to pack up for the championship before Christmas time. After Villa's win against Newcastle on Monday night, we're now four points off of safety. So we just, <laughs> it, I keep saying it and we've been saying it for ages, but we just have to win this game to start off and hopefully build from there. And the starting lineup against Arsenal was a bit unexpected. We saw Romelu and Gineppo dropped. Armstrong started once again. He was very good. Obafemi as well was a massive surprise, but he was fantastic, I felt. And, you know, Ralph has now got a case for actually putting out an unchanged lineup against Watford. But you'll have to wait till tomorrow's video where we give our predicted lineup to see if we do think Ralph will go for an unchanged team. But let's go on to Watford. Now, it could be argued that they've actually been somehow more appalling than we have. They're bottom of the league, one win all season in the Premier League. They sacked Javi Garcia early on in the season after a woeful start. Brought in Kike Sanchez Flores, who has managed the club before. It just hasn't worked out, and it sounded like that he was potentially going to be sacked before the Southampton game. He will be in charge, we believe. And their key men just haven't shone this season like they did last year. You know, Watford were competing for Europe for the most part of last season, got to the FA Cup final, and they just haven't hit the heights of last season this year. And in recent times, our games against Watford haven't been short of any controversy. Of course, last year's game at St Mary's, noted for the infamous Charlie Austin rant about VAR. It would be very interesting to see if VAR has a role to play on Saturday. And we've beaten them a few times in the last couple of seasons in the Premier League and the FA Cup. They've beaten us a couple of times, but mainly since their promotion, the results have been draws. But the last time Kike Sanchez-Flores came to St Mary's with Watford, we won 2-0. He has actually been since, now this is a fun fact, I don't know if you guys remember, but he was manager of Espanyol for a friendly, which ended 1-1, and it was the pre-season before Claude Puel's season. Fun fact for you there. But of course, I'm no expert on Watford, so I've asked my mate Shane, who you can see on the fan cams on the WD18 fan channel, for some insight on everything Watford. So Shane, take it away. Hey guys, it is Shane from WD18, the Watford fans channel, here to give you a little bit of a preview in regards to Watford's game against Southampton, of course, this Saturday. Um, Going to talk a little bit about, of course, our season so far, um, talk a little bit about Southampton and what I've made of them this season, and then finally moving on to a score prediction. Uh, so, Watford's season and how things have gone, well, things are not going amazingly well for Watford, having been... Targeting a 7th position last season to uh, starring in an FA Cup final, uh, having be, having taken part in a fantastic cup run, things have gone uh, pretty awful this season. Uh, we're currently sitting in 20th, uh, only won one game so far this season in the league. Um, that was two weeks ago, uh, before the international break, a 2-0 win away at home to Norwich. Um, 
And in actually the time from August till now, of course, we've changed our manager, Javi Gracia, departing, making way for a former Watford manager, Kike Sanchez Flores. And uh, well, he's been under pressure as well, uh, given the recent run of games. Um, of course, as I say, we did beat Norwich 2 0, that first win, that first elusive win, of course, since Kike took over in September. Um, but then, of course, last week we uh, followed that up with a heavy 3 0 defeat, really, against Burnley in a game that whereby we were victims of the Sean Dyche masterclass, unfortunately. And uh, things have been amazing for us, really. Um, and I guess a big question that has kind of been asked is um, kind of how have a side who reached an FA Cup final uh, seemingly flourishing under Gracia, uh, how have they gone from that to where we are now? It's quite simple, really. The recruitment over the summer um, hasn't been good enough. Um, areas where we were supposed to strengthen, including our defence, simply weren't weren't kind of met. Um, £35 million pounds were spent on a winger um, in Ismail Assar, and as highly rated as he was, maybe he wasn't the best uh, use of spend, really. Um, and ultimately, results just haven't gone our way. Defensively, we still look quite poor up front. We look pretty blunt as well. Um, Troy Deeney, of course, has been out. Uh, since the second game of the season, only made his return to the full team to the first team last week, actually. So, and with up top, you've got Andre Gray as well, and he's not really been firing in the goals. He's been really struggling for form. Um, the brightest spark in that team is Gerard Delafeu, um, but so far this season, at the best of times, he's been playing pretty hot and cold. Um, and that's kind of where Watford are at the moment, 20th position. Uh, of course, Southampton not too far away from them, and that's what makes. This such a big game on Saturday, of course, uh, Southampton having such a big result last Saturday, a two-all draw in a game that they actually should have absolutely peppered Arsenal, um, to be honest with you. Um, having watched back the highlights of that game, very impressed with Southampton, very impressed with Southampton, I think, as a whole. And I think a lot of a lot of neutrals outside of our two clubs would probably be looking at both of our sides think, and wondering how the hell they're even in the bottom three. Um Bizarre, I would say, because I, I'm a big fan of a few Southampton players. Um, kind of leads me on quite nicely as well to like some of your danger men as well. Big fan of Musa Gineppo. Uh He's been a really lively signing for you guys. I think he's someone that will cause us a hell of a lot of problems as well on Saturday. Um, Nathan Redmond is a guy, again, you know, the sort of player that maybe blows hot and cold for Southampton. But for us, whenever he plays Watford, he seems to give us a whole ton of problems. Um also, Danny Ings as well. I'm, I'm a big fan of Danny Ings as a striker. Maybe hasn't necessarily been given the plaudits, I think, but from my perspective, he's someone I can look at him as being a particularly quite a solid striker. Now, you guys have got two youngsters as well Stuart Armstrong, Michael Obafemi, I know, put in some star turns, put in two star turn performances against Arsenal. Again, it's youngsters like that, it's the unknown quantities, I guess, sometimes in the Prem, and you know, they'll be, they'll be keen to impress at home as well. Um, but I, I do look at Musa Gineppo um, and I look at him and I think he's someone that can cause us a whole flurry of problems. Uh, as I say, defensively, we're not looking particularly strong at the moment. Uh, how do I see the game going? Uh, right now, I, I'm, I'm not particularly confident. Um, I think the players' confidence has been knocked again because of the defeat last week. We kind of hope to build upon that. Of course, we kind of hope to build upon the Norwich game, move on to the Burnley game, try and pick up points, and then, of course, try and pick up another win today. But it feels like a rebuilding job. It feels like, you know, you stack up all all the Jenga kind of blocks in one, and then all of a sudden the defeat, and it all comes crashing down again, and we've got to start rebuilding again. And that's exactly how it feels at the moment with us. Um, fans are not particularly confident. I'm not particularly confident, really, for the game on Saturday. Um, if I'm being totally honest, I think it depends on how we start. But right now, I think, I think, I think we look like a, I think we look like a side who've, you know, to kind of quote the expression, you know, we've got, we're kind of like rabbits, at, kind of rabbits in the headlights, and that's the best way I can kind of like look at it because. There's no doubt you guys at home, you guys are going to want to get the win. You guys are going to, you are going to want to build upon that draw against Arsenal. I just have a sneaky feeling you guys might do that. Uh, we're not really up to much and it will become as a genuine shock to, I think, a lot of our fans if we were to get off and get ourselves any kind of result. But I'm going to stay positive. I don't think we're going to win the game. I think it will be a high scoring draw. I think... I hope hope we make hope hope we kind of take it well, hope we definitely take advantage um of I would say not so much your poor defence, but I think you know you've had you've had moments this season of course. 
Um, but by the defence hasn't necessarily been that great, and frankly, we've we've had that as well. Um, and maybe just maybe that's why Sky have decided to show this game on TV because um, when two sides who can't defend get together, it can usually be quite a, quite an entertaining game. Um, I'm going for a two-two draw. Uh, let's see what happens. We ultimately we need a win, and a win right now. I think I think actually I go as far as say anything less than a win at this moment would probably be curtains for Kiko Sanchez Flores. Right, thanks mate. I will leave his Twitter link in the description below. Uh, also check out his fan cams on the WD18 channel. They are hilarious. But on to my prediction. Now Watford lost 3-0 at home to Burnley last time out and we drew 2 all against Arsenal away and should have won the game. Based on confidence, you'd like to think that we're a lot more confident they on Saturday than they are. But of course, we haven't won at home yet. There's a lot of pressure on Saints and... I do fear that that may cost us. You know, you can see a draw coming, really. But I'm going to stay optimistic. I'm going to go for a 2 0 win. I think it's going to be an incredibly scrappy game. But I think when you compare the two sides, we've got Ings in form. Gineppo can create. Bufal can as well uh, if they're coming off the bench. Uh, Armstrong has been really strong in the last couple of games. So I'm going to I'm going to back us to win. Like I said, 2 0. Ings, of course, is going to score. And yeah, hopefully we can keep a clean sheet as well because it's been a long time. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Do make sure you like the video if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already. Follow us on all of our socials. Also, let us know your score predictions down in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you. And yeah, tune in for tomorrow for our predicted lineup. Until then, take it easy, guys, and we'll see you soon.